So I want to clear up some of the confusion that was generated in the last video about why we were taking runout measurements where. So most people are familiar with seeing runout being measured in a case using typically a fueling or a gyms tool that bolts to in a twin cam or Milwaukee 8 application the cam support plate surface and then it uses a one thousandth indicator to measure runout on the very end of the pinion shaft. Now when we're actually building new flywheels like this stroker flywheel assembly for a 1969 FL uh, we actually are measuring this in a truing stand. So instead of the bearings holding them steady and measuring out here, we do the opposite because we have these centers that go into the end of each shaft and these centers are what keeps the shaft stationary, which means our movement is actually going to be measured in here at the bearing surface. So we want to make sure we get our measurement being pulled as close to the flywheel half as possible because that is going to be the most run out that we're going to be able to measure in the assembly as we are rotating. So typically I like to use my crank pin as a zero point and then we go around and we adjust from there whether it's tight or loose measuring high or low. So the important thing also to note is what graduation your indicators are using. So these indicators that I use whenever we're building flywheels here are five ten thousandths. So that means each one of those lines is point zero 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 five instead of the one thousandth that a lot of people are used to seeing. So in this instance, as that's just barely moving, we're talking maybe up to two ten thousandths of an inch, depending on how you stare at that indicator. Um, and that's really what we're looking for as we do these assemblies. The important thing to remember too is that when you're looking in the book and you're looking at your runout specifications to pay close attention to what the total indicated runout callout is. So for example, when you're looking in the shovel head service manual, it calls for a runout maximum of 2,000, so that's 0 .002. But that is not 2,000 pinion shaft runout as a maximum, that is 2,000 total indicated runout. So that means the combined runout on both shafts total has to be less than two thousandths. That's why whenever we're building flywheels here, especially with the five piece assemblies, where we've got sprocket shaft, sprocket shaft half flywheel, crank pin, pinion shaft side flywheel half, and pinion shaft for a total of five, which is four tapered seats, we always try to push for less than five ten thousandths per side, giving us a total combined of less than a thousandth, which will give it a good smooth ride uh, throughout the life of that flywheel assembly. So. Hope that clears it all up. Y'all take care. Now, several people after the fact did have doubts as to whether or not our indicators were functional. Uh, we do check our indicators frequently to ensure the accuracy of the measurements. Uh, we take a lot of pride in making sure we can get our runout specifications on these flywheels as tight as possible to give the customers the best results.